I like to talk to you something if you have mind to listen to it. I know all of you, you are young or old, you will go through every phase of life. With all the energy you have, there will certain things which will happen to you. And that is the, whether you can guide your life like a guiding star, self-propelled. And uh, I definitely know that each human being who is alive wants to have control. Some of us are very ambitious, we want to control the whole world. Some of us are very ambitious, we want to control the family and the surroundings. But very few are, might be here who would like to control their own mind. And without the control of your own mind, your life will never be complete. I'm not very worried whether you are very spiritual or you are not. I'm not anxious to sell you the religion because the only thing you can rebel against is religion. Because the rebelling against religion is not rebelling against any particular dictate or doctrine. Rebelling against religion is to rebelling against your own discipline. It's a very easy syndrome to express that you have no faith. It's very easy to express you have no direction. It is very easy to make a statement that you have no reality. And these days, religion is not precious to people because self-discipline is not precious to people. For our life, what we get out of a religion, what we get out of a reality of our life or our own discipline, we think it gives us nothing. We feel that uh, there's no satisfaction, emotional satisfaction, social satisfaction, our personal satisfaction by following a religion. It may be true in the light of a lot of people because our society in general accept no religion. Our society in particular give no satisfaction for the religion. And people are very confused about religion. What is it? Why to obey so many restrictions? Why to follow certain laws? Why to respect somebody? How come somebody knows better than me? Let me tell you something very simple. You have actually nothing to offer to yourself without your own discipline and not experiencing your own mind and your own discipline and your own wisdom within you. 
your life is as hollow, shallow and empty as you can name it. You are just a can. I am not telling you that you should be confused about religion. I am honestly admitting today that I have the experience, including myself, that being a religious man, people are confused. I have seen religious people confused, useless, helpless, and hypocrite. I have seen religious people just knocking against the wall like a blind man, not knowing what they are doing, what they want. I am not talking of the religious person who has couple thousand people to follow him. I am telling you a religious person to whose name 10,000 people get up in the morning and bow before they start their day. 100,000 people get up in the morning and bow their day. If I'm talking of a person who is considered as a living God, even that living God is confused. Religious word is not for everybody, but it is for anybody. You do not become religious because you want to be. Religion is not anything other than a science of reality and it is not reality about God. Is a reality about yourself. The religion has been so interlocked and so confused. Ultimately what happened is that there is a religion and religion become a group of people who put together themselves and work it out. And by doing so they become power, they become political power, they become social power, they become economic power. And that power is always used, misused, exploited, understood or misunderstood. But actually that is not religion. Religion is when you experience within you, your very self, your very discipline. Religion is a reality when you can master over your own mind. Not because I said it, not because somebody said it. When you take guidance from everybody and finally you take, it, it awakens you to the point. It awakens you to the point that when you start taking guidance within you. And that guiding is, guidance is not environmental and circumstantial. That guidance is infinite. I would not have grown beard, doesn't matter if the whole world have told me to do so. But not a single person in the world could answer me why the man grows the beard. And why human skull has the longest hair. That was my question. I asked every teacher I met. And only one person could answer me and I accepted him as my teacher. It is not that I never went to religious people. I went to people religious who could lift themselves on the ground just to show me how powerful they are. And I laughed. Because aeroplane can lift itself right with a few gallons of gasoline. It's not a big deal. People who could read a message without anything. Wireless can do that. People who can know what nobody can know. Interporalize message system which can be developed in 
sending the beep and beam and getting the answer can exactly do all that. Things we have developed in the science and things we'll develop in the science. But that doesn't make any sense. Whether we have a control over our mind to direct our emotions and our passion or not, there are two things which are your worst enemies and without which you are not alive either. It's the emotion, the feeling, and they are your own. If you're feeling and your own emotions, you can control by your mind, under the guidance of your intelligence, you have walked on the path of a reality. And if this path walking can reach you to a destination where you can understand with your own mind, your own consciousness, and that intelligence follows the consciousness, you have reached what is called in simple English God. You don't have to go to God. And that is the total challenge. You can see things through microscope. You can th see things through telescope. You can predict things through horoscope. But with all scopes, if you can understand conscience, and you do not develop the conscience scope, which is called the third eye, Agya Chakra, you are still incomplete. I'm not here challenging you who you are. I'm telling you what your value is on the scale of consciousness. Therefore, in our heart we have a place for the words of the Guru. Guru has guided us Siri Guru Granth has guided us to talk to the mind. That's the one place where mind is talked to. Identity of the mind is established as your own identity. And there are thousands and thousands of Shabads which do talk to the mind. So when Guru talks to the mind and also answers the answers, there is a some established identity which has to be looked into. After that, Sri Guru Granth tells you about consciousness. A state of a controlling level in which man can relate, on which a woman can relate, on which a human can relate. When all that is mixed together, you are on the road of prosperity. Otherwise, you are on the road of politics. Conflict is between prosperity and politics. There is no position without politics. And politics is a cutthroat living. For anything going up, you have to eliminate all. Otherwise, you can't be number one. In prosperity, more the merrier. You have to carry all. Both things are difficult. In a competition, you have to eliminate those who are ahead of you, so that you can be number one. In prosperity, you have to carry all, that you can be number one. There are some people who are so upset against me, you can't believe them. Sir, can we go to a dinner tonight? I say, yeah, good idea. Though I am on a diet, I can't eat, but let's go. Not all the people. Can we go one, two people? I say, what do you mean by one, two people? What is one, two people? I can't handle a group. 
Well, your body is a group. Arms are there, fingers are there, heart is there, legs are there, this, this thing is there, that thing is there. What is this? It's all not a group. You are a bunch of a living group. So if you cannot handle your own group, what is a group? No, 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 no. Real thing is one to one. You know what is one to one? One to one is a very rare state in which consciousness only intermerges with the consciousness. Otherwise, everything in this world we live through is exploring. Nobody knows anybody. Nobody is ever know anybody. As you cannot know God, you cannot know another human being. All you can do is explore. But there is a one way in that exploration where you can totally win. That is called surrender. Unfortunately, in America, it is very difficult to surrender because it is a sign of defeat. How can I give up my ego? Huh? Why should I listen to anybody? <clears throat> well, when you take copper and nickel, put it together, you get out of it white brass. Understand? And then you burn the white brass, you can never split copper and nickel back again. It becomes one. That is called one-to-one -one basis. You all want one-to-one -one basis, but you are not willing to go through the heat of it. You know how crooked you are? You want to control each other on one-to-one -one basis. I control you, you control me. God knows who controls who. That is not one-to-one. One-to-one -one. One -one is when neither you exist nor I exist. The one exists. When two elements meet together, a third element is formed. That is called the one element. Two always make one. That's the law of nature. That's the law of God. Man and a woman meets to produce a child. That's the law of one. You and I meet to create one. One is a very special science on which the entire Sikh walk of life is based. It starts with Ik Aunkar, the one creator of this creation. But how to reach that one? By amalgamating the self. When I and you meet into one, then the one, the unknown one will live. Neither you will live, nor I will live. And it is the most conscious act of life. That's why tomorrow there will be Amrit and we'll baptize people. We'll baptize with them with a the double-edged sword. What we are telling them, the sharp of life is towards the dark and towards the light. It is both ways the same. And you are the center of it. You are the theme of it. You are the not product or byproduct or project or persuasion of it. You are a living identity. Hey, may I tell you something? Some of you want to be rich, some of you want to be poor, some of you want to be free, some of you want to enjoy life as you want to. There are a lot of inspiration in you. This all will come to you in proportion. As much you put in, that much you may have. 
but the whole universe will come to you when you will become one or learn the procedure to become one with anybody or everybody or anybody anywhere or any time and there's a one principle to it that principle is we all have one thing common we all have different mind we all have different body but we have one soul is a part of one soul if we can see the soul in each other relate to it find it understand it respect it then that oneness will be forever you have to learn to respect other creation bad and good i'm listen i'm not sitting in judgment and i'm not asking to judge anybody if you can see a prostitute and a very noble woman if you see the prostitute bow and thank god that i am not a prostitute if you are not if you are then relate to it then you have meet the same as you are if you find a noble woman bow and be in gratitude thank god at least you have seen somebody who is noble and you have acknowledged it so each place give you only one chance and that is to thank you do not have a chance not to thank when you get up in the morning and you open your eyes and you breathe consciously if you have not thanked yet you have lost the greatest opportunity of the right to live at night when you are dead tired and you do not know what to do and you have put your head with pillow and you are gone before going if you have not thanked for that day you have lost the opportunity to enjoy the night each state of mind we enter we enter with gratitude and that is god that is experiencing god alive that is knowing god now rest my friend is politics god within you is in you and within your gratitude and in that gratitude you grow as saintly as you could some people are very afraid i i follow that they feel very pressured why should we look different why should not we are different each one of us is different no body is alike nobody has a thumbprint even alike that's why police can find out who's the thief who's not from the thumbprint from fingerprints so every body has a fingerprint different than the any other body every body has a different body than any other body every body has a different mind than other body mind is different because of the caliber body is different because of the projection of power and uh, preparedness to accept things and i tell you today your entire life is based on two things body and mind and satnam that's it beyond very few will go but you are a one group of people who are supposed to be walking towards your own soul about your own spirit consciously that's why i am not reminding you of the body i am not giving you lecture how to be healthy you can be as healthy as samson and mind wise you may have the mind of anybody you can name 
But if you have not the light of soul shining around you, you shall be confused. You shall clash with each other, with your environments, with your neighborhood. You shall not follow discipline because you are handicapped and you have weakness. Because the strength behind you is the spirit of you. If you not let that spirit play, you will not have the power to go. The world today needs peace. It needs harmony. It needs tranquility. We all can work for it and give it. Only if we have peace within ourselves. You cannot, my friend, give anybody if you don't have it. You cannot give anybody satisfaction if you don't have it. If there is a glass, this one, I got one here. Suppose this glass has nothing in it, it can't give it anything. All it can give me is glasshood. But if this glass has a water in it, then this glass can give itself to me with water, which I can take. You understand this simple example? You all want to take everything. Remember this law. You cannot take until you do not give. If you do not know how to give, you will never be in a position to take. And if you do, let us see, there's a place, right? If you do not make some space and do not empty something, where you can put the other thing? The problem is you all get drowned because you take and take and take and you have no place, you, here you go. You don't have the capacity to take. First create the capacity to take, then take. And the law of capacity to take is first give. Because govern the word by the law. Law of vacuum is there is no vacuum. When you create the vacuum, things will come in. I tell you right now, if you ask, hey, who are you? I'm so and so. How are you doing? Fine. What is your age? 32. Are you single and married? No, I'm, I have a girlfriend. The whole interest is lost. Nobody wants to go and complete this situation because there's already a girlfriend. If you say, no, I'm single, and she can say, well, I'm single too. Two singles can meet. Two engaged cannot meet. Two engaged shall cross each other. Therefore, please understand, if we get up in the morning, we do sadhana. We don't do sadhana to please anybody. We do sadhana to please ourselves. We, in the morning, work on ourselves. We want to know ourselves. We prepare ourselves. And that is the way to go. Some of you are very deadly against Bana, and that includes those who are very near to me. These days I am not well, I am recuperating, and I am not working, and I am in a very painful state of mind when I, people who are supposed to support me come with the funkiest dress. I can't believe it. That within my lifetime, I'll see this joke. Because when you do not wear bana, all you are communicating in a very simple way that I am freaking out is a body language. Because I know the day I cannot tie my turban properly, I know I am not mentally right. It is called prava. It is a state of radiance, it is a state of appearance. How you want to appear. 
and mostly we want to appear attractive, attractive and funky. <clears throat> we want to appear attractive to satisfy our sensuality and funky so that we can have a romance. It is called mental prostitution under the subtitle to have a hook or a harpoon in other bodies' mental activity to evaporate or collaborate into the mental thought form to exploit the other human being. And all you of this fashion and blah, blah, blah is nothing but the playing of the game of the mind to live at each other. Don't misunderstand that I don't understand it. I have been telling you all these years, and I'll keep on telling you till my last day, this is the bad game you play. It is easy to harpoon another mind and let the line go, but it is very difficult to stay yourself then. You are dragged with it. And your position will be no different than that man who is in a horse, whose foot in a saddle, and he's hanging on the ground, walking behind. Have you seen sometime in the movies? Huh? The rider fell from the horse. Okay? Not on the ground, but his one foot is in the... Very good. Then what happens? Huh? And how many of you can honestly now calculate yourself that you are just dragging? And that is what your pain of life is. You are not free. You want to write the whole universe. You want to control everybody. And you don't have a control on your own mind. That's the painful state. What we are going through now is the middle age crisis. When a girl or a boy is nine year old, it is middle age crisis. Between 18 years of life cycle, nine years is middle age crisis. I have seen every woman has a very good excuse. Moment she becomes 36 to 45, you can't even deal with this creature. They have a very planned, uh, what you call is a 10 years plan to let you know that she's going through middle age crisis. To keep our mind and our faculty of mind together. And not take the excuses under middle age crisis, under old age crisis, under early age crisis. The idea is when you want crisis, you have them, doesn't matter under what age, time, space, and circumstances you are. You have the right to create harmony, and you have the right to create crisis. Nobody craves for you. You create them, you will live with them, and you will bury yourself with them. Well, there is a one way to get out, and that is to grow. And grow consciously. And that is one chance we all have. We have one chance to grow consciously and take the guidance. There are many people who read the Sri Guru Granth, they say, we don't understand it. Really, you don't. Because Sri Guru Granth does not tell you not to take ice cream. Mostly we go for psychoanalysis and we talk to psychiatrists and we go for counseling. It surprises me sometimes 
Why we cannot counsel ourselves? I have counseled now for almost 16, 18 years. I have one difficulty. When I counsel somebody, he said, the people say, you, sir, make things so simple. I said, but what is complicated? Nothing. Simple is you are neurotic, he's neurotic, you both are fighting. You drop your neurosis, you drop your neurosis, matter will end. How? I, I always have something in my hand, I say, just like this. Dropping is just dropping. The idea is neither you are willing to drop, nor she is willing to drop. You both want to fight, you want a free show. And pay somebody money to learn how to fight that free show or not pay, that's all it's about. Life has a simple rule. You want to live it or you want to mess it? If you mess the life, you will miss the principle of life. I know these days you all want to be loved. You all want to love, you want to have somebody to love you, you want somebody to love you and you love somebody and you want to be engaged. But question is, do you have the capacity? Do you deserve? Do you know what love is? Are you chasing your own, uh, what you call as uh, mental thought, mental state? Fantasy is kind of a practical joke. It exists. But mental level does not exist enough. One morning you get up, you feel very passionate, you want to do everything. Next morning you get up, you don't want to get up. Now who wants to be with you, Mr. Yo-Yo? The problem we are going through right now is that each one wants this sport without knowing what sport means. The whole world may give you sport, but if your own mind shall not sport you, you will not be in a position to do anything in life. And mind cannot be controlled, your own mind cannot be controlled and guided and give you the sport until it is brought to a discipline. That word which brings a mind to a discipline to support you is called mantra. Mantra, to bring discipline to the mind. That's why we do japa. Japa creates the heat. That is called tapa. In tapa that heat burns the karma. Out of the karma grows the kindness and it becomes dharma. Out of that grows the compassion. And that is called siddhi. That is called power. From that comes the word sadhu. Who has controlled himself through the all aspect of life. And that is what we call is sadhana which you do not normally want to go. How many of you are doing regular sadhana? May I know? Raise your hands. Cheat on it, doesn't matter, you lie anyway, just show better hands. Give big number, come on. Shame on you. Can you believe? I know you so well, you don't know. Alright, those who do their sadhana partially, huh? partially, and those who wants to do sadhana and love to do it, but sleep through that time. <laughs> I, I thought on this issue, you all can raise your hand. <laughs> well, we have one kriya to do. After that, we'll be free for the day. And that will be my gift to you, okay?